Hey there guys, how's it going? It's time for a Blu-ray video with one comic book and some action figures. A nice little update of just shit I bought. Because it's been a while. When when was the last one? I was gonna check. It's gonna take too long. It was probably before I went to college I think I did one. I did. Because that one I had to stitch together a little bit of me from college where I had Lego Batman and then other shit. Yeah, it was, it's been a while. But um, before we get started, I just want to show you something. Well, I found this when we were unpacking things like what am I going to bring to college we came across this <sighs> isn't that just amazing eating popcorn out of this it just feels so special I actually might start bringing it to the theater and like can you fill this up for me just charge me for a large and throw that shit in there uh, quick story I did once have one that was for the Simpsons movie and it was really nice it was I forget what was on it but it was for the Simpsons movie so that was like 2007 and uh, my stupid ass I was making popcorn at home on the stove and then I went, okay, finished popping it in an old crank style thing. I put the popcorn bowl down, filled it with popcorn, and as I picked it up, I looked. I'm like, what's that? And I put the fucking bowl on the hot burner. Like, it didn't even occur to me that's a hot spot, so I put it down, filled it up, and it had already started melting, so like, it kind of like started splitting in half, like... Like, it started peeling and, like, bending and stretching in half, and I was like, oh, fuck. And you, well, the amount of times I wanted to punch myself, I did it about three, I should have did it about 33 times, but I still have two Dark Knight popcorn bowls, so we're good there. But before we get started with everything else, let's look at the action figures I got. Ready? We got me and Sebastian in 11. Uh, we got Ray and Hella popcorn. Uh, not popcorn. Drink toppers from... Cineplex, the galaxy. Love it. We got Justice League Batfleck. Uh, who else is new? We got Star-Lord. Get into focus, motherfucker. We got some Spider-Man Homecoming. We got the two Spider-Mans and Iron Man. I'm, I'm a fan of this Spider-Man. I think it's hilarious. The outfit. Got Punisher, Thor Ragnarok, Daredevil, Jessica Jones. <sighs> um, this trio, plus Thor too, but this trio happy about that. Especially Daredevil and Jessica Jones. No offense to Punisher, because you're also amazing. But it's just like, I've been waiting forever. Like, when are they going to make some kind of action figures? First up, comic book. It's still it's still in the seal. I haven't read it yet, but The Dark Knight, um, Batman The Dark Knight Master Race. This is the third chapter in the Dark Knight saga. I still have yet to read The Dark Knight Strikes Again, because I've heard it's total crap, and I know a few choice things that happen. Uh, there's like a full four-page Superman Wonder Woman sex scene in space. I think uh, Dick Grayson dies and comes back as a zombie and Batman cuts his head off with an axe. And I think there's something to do with the Flash is stuck on like a hamster wheel running constantly to power the, up the electricity for the whole world. Apparently it's a stupid fucking book, but maybe I'll read it one day. I don't know. Anyway, back to things. Let's start it off. Stand By Me, the best Stephen King adaptation ever will probably never be topped. I mean it. Shawshank, it's an incredible, perfect movie. I think Stand By Me is better. Seriously, this movie can appeal to anyone. You can either relate being a child their age, which is when I first saw it, I was like 13, 14, or was I 12? I was young, I was their age. And I was like, oh my God, this movie is awesome. And then you still relate to it as an adult, thinking about you never have better friends than when you're 12 years old. The movie is perfect. I absolutely adore it, and it really, it can't be beat. It really is the best there is. It's the best coming-of-age movie I've ever seen. And speaking of coming-of-age movies, let's just do the other one right now. Edge of Seventeen, Haley Steinfeld. Let's talk about her for a second. She did True Grit, and she was, again, like 12 years old. She was adorable. I was like, oh my god, she's so cute. And then, like, she didn't do many other movies or great movies or performances. She became a pop singer. And then she finally did another great movie. It's like, this is what we want. You're like an awesome actress when you really try. And I really like it. I like Woody Harrelson in it a lot as a teacher that really just doesn't give a shit and he's just gonna speak his mind and be kind of an asshole in a way that's very charming. Love it. Justice League season two on Blu-ray. I got it because it was on sale for cheap, like 15 bucks. I was like, sweet. Um, I don't have season one yet. I know, I need to get all the seasons of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. I want to watch it all. I want to enjoy it all. Now, I love the old animated series Batman show. I don't remember the Superman show, and I don't remember Justice League. I remember liking Justice League. I don't even remember Superman, so I should probably... 
I know I want to get Superman and I want to get all of Justice League. I want to watch it. Pretty sure they're almost as great. I think Batman was just like the epitome of an animated show that was just perfect. This next show, I just, um, it was like two months ago, I believe, yeah, in October. I had finished season one. I finally got around to watching the thing and I was like, oh, it's only 10 episodes and I breezed through it so quickly and I loved it. And now I'm on season two of Game of Thrones. I'm excited to continue this. It's so nice to actually know nothing. The show is so big in culture and yet I know so little. I know, you know nothing Jon Snow and there's like some icicle looking dude eventually that's going to be a dickhead. But I don't know anything that happens. I think, I think the most I knew was that, um... Sean Bean was in season one and did not continue in the next season, and I sort of knew why, but that was about it. Saw, the entire collection except for Jigsaw, because when they made this, Jigsaw wasn't even a thing. I look forward to re-watching these, I'll be honest. I wanted to do a big marathon of them and review them all for when Jigsaw came out, but timing didn't work and I wasn't able to find that back then. But it works out, so now I have it. I'll pick up Jigsaw when it's like more inexpensive. I'm not, I'm not gonna day one pick that movie up. But the Saw movies are just like dumb trash that's fun to watch. So I look forward to rewatching them. Maybe next Halloween I'd like to review those. This Halloween, let's be honest, this Halloween and Christmas, I was busy with college and all that. Some shit was going on during <laughs> October, so I just could not do horror movie reviews. And I wanted to do a lot. There was like Gerald's Game, that other Stephen King, uh, 1922. I saw Annabelle Creation, which is surprisingly the next movie on the list. Um, spoilers. I thought this was a pretty good movie. I thought it was a really good horror movie. Not amazing, groundbreaking, but it was more than solid. I really enjoyed it. But um, yeah, I was so busy in October, and then December was a similar thing with finals for the term, so I couldn't review a bunch of Christmas movies. Sad. I know, next year I have to make preparations way in advance or do shit like that in September and November, and then release them and upload them in October and December. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, Annabelle was uh, pretty good, solid. That There's a lot of good scares in it. There's there's a few parts of the movie where it's like, eh. I think I actually filmed the review for Annabelle, and then I just was so busy I couldn't even be bothered to edit it. But uh, I think the world will forgive me. Uh, next up, the farthest thing from an Annabelle or Saw movie, we got some Disney movies. Pinocchio. I don't remember it. I look forward to revisiting it. I remember the Jonathan Taylor Thomas one, and... Uh, that shit actually scared me a lot. I, they end up on a pirate ship or something and then they turn into donkeys. It freaked me out. Live action Pinocchio is disturbing. I would like to rewatch it because it's going to scare the shit out of me still, I bet. Bambi, I also don't remember. This one's still in the plastic wrap. Mmm, sealed in for his protection. His mom won't be shot for a while. Not in front of me, at least. Uh, Thumper, I remember Thumper was really cute. I want to rewatch that. I want to just watch them all because I've got all my Disney movies here with me, or at least most of them. So, well, one day I'm just gonna like for a full day or two just go through all of them, binge all my Disney movies. I'll be the happiest person alive. The Lion King. This movie. This is probably the most legendary, well-regarded Disney movie ever. Everyone holds this up as the greatest one. And I seriously don't think I've seen it since I was maybe five years old. I had the VHS. And stuff happened. I just I haven't seen them forever. I can't wait. This one, I'm seriously anticipating watching this so much. I can't wait. The Circle of Life. Come here. Asa Kira puts it in her bum. Yeah, I said that out loud. Shut the fuck up. The four movie collection. We got Bean the movie, Be Mr. Bean's Holiday, Johnny English, Johnny English Reborn. Rowan Atkinson, man. I love that guy. Mr. Bean, I, I actually, I love Mr. Bean so much. And Johnny English, the first one, I adore that movie. And the second one, from what I remember, was really good, really funny. Did I review it? I probably did. My brother's going to love that because he loves Rowan Atkinson even more than I do. I can't wait to rewatch those. Bean, the movie, though. I love that one. When he's driving down the street and he's just flipping everyone off. Come on. Let's go back to spooky horror for a minute with a movie that I saw it on the shelf. I'm like, I couldn't see this in theaters. It was one night only. It wasn't near me. The previous two movies I hold near and dear to my heart. They played a role in my childhood growing up, like coming of age as a boy who would enjoy horror movies. Um, it's a controversial topic. I don't want to get into it now, but I do. I'm going to watch this and review it. Jeepers Creepers 3. I seriously, I'm very excited to see this, even though... I don't have very high hopes or hopes in general. I'm like, 
it's been a long time and I I really don't know. The movie got a one night release and I don't know if that was because of the controversy around the director or the movie's maybe not that good, but I'll find out. And one more scary movie, Jumanji. Um, check that out. That's a nice steel book. I think that's really cool. Although I'm really jealous of the 4K artwork they had for the 4K. <laughs> um, Kyle Lambert who did the uh, Stranger Things artwork for the like posters. He did the 4K artwork and it looks so good. I just, I love that art style. I'm like, that should be on everything. It's just, it's sort, it's throwbacky. You look at a Indiana Jones poster and that's what they had. And it's just, I like that style. It's really good. But like this, the board game thing, that's cool. Um, Jumanji is scary though. That like drum beat, boom, 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 boom. When you hear that shit, I got spooked watching this movie. I was scared of that drum beat. And Van Pelt, he's pretty funny. Uh, Robin Williams, amazing in this movie, wonderful. Kirsten Dunst, really good. Um, the movie, I will say, <laughs> I wasn't sure. Like I was, I was like, okay, the new Jumanji's out. I want to watch the old one first. Jumanji's not a classic of childhood, but it's one that I have a high regard for and still do. It's a really fun movie, and the new one I have watched, I'll do a review. Because um, FYI, me filming this video right now is a miracle because I had my SD card. And I guess SD cards wear out after a while. This was news to me because I was trying to film a video. I'd hit record, talk for like two seconds, and it would stop. And it'd say, automatically stopped. And I was like, why? So I'd do it again, and I was going to punch my camera. And it turns out SD cards from getting like recorded on, you erase it, you record new stuff, wiping it. Like just constantly putting shit on there and taking shit off. After like four years, it got worn out. I had to buy a new one. These things happen. So... Now that that, that was actually a crisis, and now that it's solved, I can do videos. But there's like a few days where I'm like, my camera's not working, what's happening? And I was freaking out. Spider-Man Homecoming. I got the action figures. I'm a fan of the movie, but not as much as everyone else. Everyone really loves this movie, and they say it's the best Spider-Man ever. Well, I guess that technically might be true. I, I have a soft spot for Tobey Maguire, but... Best Spider-Man movie definitely is not Homecoming. It is the first and second Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Those movies are pretty much perfect besides a few things. I should review them. They're so good. But um, Homecoming was a solid third best and it was a good movie. I enjoyed it, but it's just like fucking... There's things about it that really don't work. Not showing Uncle Ben or mentioning it or anything. That's big for Spider-Man. That's His whole character is based off what happened on his Uncle Ben giving him that sense of responsibility. Removing that just like it leaves a hole in the movie really. There's a few other things But I still like the movie a lot. It's really fun. Michael Keaton in the second half of the movie when they get to that scene He becomes a really good villain. The first half is Whatever, but it's like a really funny movie. It's incredibly enjoyable and entertaining. The Neon Demon this movie It's Nicholas winning ref and he does some weird movies I like Only God Forgives a lot and that's a weird movie that's maybe not so amazing, but the cinematography, the use of color, I just dig it. This movie was similar, but it, it was his weakest movie I've seen so far besides the one everyone else likes but I hate, Valhalla Rising. I really don't like that movie, everyone else does. But like Neon Demon, it's the one of his I like the least. Like I enjoy it, but I'm like, eh. Like I did a full review, it's a... It, <laughs> I mean, I like Keanu Reeves in it a lot, he's really funny. Swiss Army Man. This is one of the most original, interesting, unique movies uh, I've ever seen in my life. Especially of 2016 when it came out and I, I didn't do a top 10 for that year yet. I need to get on shit. I need to do that for 2017. I just wanted to review a few movies, just a few, and then get to it. Because if I don't see shit, too bad for the movies. But this movie, it's this is a must-see movie. It is weird. It is... It's the best movie that's just filled with fart jokes. Batman, The Enemy Within. This is the Telltale series, volume two or season two. I can't wait to review this. I can't wait to finish it. I'm only on episode three because I haven't released episode four or five yet. I finished the first game. I want to review that and this one. I can't highly recommend Telltale games enough. They're some of the best games ever. It's like playing out a TV show and it's uh, like R-rated or what do they have for video games? It's M-rated, but yeah R-rated like Batman. Oh my god, and it like fits perfectly It's not too much. 
It's still, it's like, it makes me think, I love seeing a Batman movie, but he would work so well if they gave him a big budget and either an HBO or Netflix, some kind of show, give him like a solid eight episodes, like this season will be the Joker, this one will be Riddler. It would be really good if they gave it a budget. Another Telltale game, The Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't played this yet, but again, I'm excited. I can't wait. I love Telltale. South Park, The Fractured But Whole. This came with the Stick of Truth. Um, I haven't played that one yet. I'm enjoying it. I like South Park, and I think the game's fun. Uh, I would call it tedious, just because, like, what you... It's an RPG type of game, and I'm not into those. Like, that fighting style where you sit there, you pick your fight, you hit them once, they pick their fight move, they hit you. I don't like that, and just the RPG gameplay. It's not my favorite type of gameplay at all. It's one of my least favorites, so I'll never buy other RPG games. I was like, it's South Park. It's like 30 bucks. I'll give it a shot. I'm enjoying it, but damn. <laughs> I, I do not... Not even close to loving it. Like, it's fun. I'm gonna get through it little bit by little bit, but it's not a type of game I can really binge eight hours on. Like, I get bored eventually. Like, fuck this shit. I don't like RPGs. Next up, the Star Wars prequels. Forgive me, because some of you might know I already own these movies. I have the steel books of them, but they're back at home, and I'm not gonna drive, like, three hours to get home to pick them up, but I do want to watch them and review them, and it's kind of better to have them in the like group packaging it just feels right they're like sealed up tight much like the original trilogy i have right over there um the steel books they actually like slide off the shelf they i put them on the shelf and they just like what the fuck oh sweet i have class in like a half hour i'm ready but um yeah, so they, they're like suicide jumpers that dive off my shelf, and I say, fuck you, so I'm going to get rid of those. What's funny is the uh, prequel just suicide bombed off my bed, so they just have a way of wanting to die. Next up, Alien Covenant. <sighs> yeah, that movie. I, y you know... I didn't get to see it in theaters. I really wanted to. I kind of want to do a review for it. I want to review the whole franchise. But, uh... Alien Covenant, man. I loved Prometheus. I thought Prometheus was amazing. And Alien Covenant? Like, it takes some of the good stuff of Prometheus, like Michael Fassbender, and some other interesting ideas, and it keeps doing those. And then it has a bunch of bad shit. Particularly anything with the alien, because it's this CGI, like, I don't think it was ever practical, it's all CGI. This really herky-jerky, way too fast-moving CGI monster that, it's not scary. It's not scary anymore, it doesn't have a bit of tension. It's not even interesting as action, it's just a monster running around killing people that I don't give a shit about, because it's a totally underdeveloped crew. The only scene of development they had for any of the characters is in a cutscene that they put on YouTube. I want to see Ridley Scott make good alien movies, and I think he has an interesting idea of where he's going with it, with Michael Fassbender and the character of David. But every movie, it's just also, it's a slap in the face to alien fans, to the alien creation, the mythology. He's making it less cool every time, although there's an other, like, the alien keeps getting less interesting and cool and scary. But David's story, I just, I'm into that, and I feel like that's what he wants to tell. Leave the alien out of it, and... I don't know. At this point, he's getting... He's like on the thinnest wire of completely ruining the alien creature forever. Next up, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I adore this movie. I thought it was great. Um, little did I know it would be outdone by Thor Ragnarok, even though... This movie I gave an A+, I gave Thor Ragnarok an A or an A-. I think Ragnarok is a funnier movie. Although I think this one may be a better movie in terms of, like, character. It's weird. I, I get finicky about the MC movies, MCU movies. But, like, I love the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. The first one I thought was, like, pretty much perfect besides a not fully compelling villain and a thing here or there. But that was, like, an A-plus movie to me. I enjoyed it that much. And the sequel is the same, even though it, like, developed characters, pushed them further, had a great arc of family and fathers and all this and that. I was totally into that movie. I love it. Next up, we got a triple threat of Marvel Netflix shows that they put on Blu-ray. I'm just trying to fucking pick them up right now. 
We got Daredevil Season 2, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. Luke Cage, wonderful show. I really love it. It's, um, I do need to do uh, my review for The Defenders and Punisher still. I watched The Defenders twice now because I watched it and it took me too long to review it, so I rewatched it. I got my camera fixed so I can actually do it now. Luke Cage, though, I love that show. Adore Jessica Jones. I absolutely. Kristen Ritter. I can't say enough good things. And Daredevil Season 2. Um, a bit weaker from Season 1 just because, like, the show flow is a little bit slower. It doesn't, like, work in the same way. Some of the Elektra stuff drags the show down a little bit, but I still like Elektra. And it's got the fucking Punisher in it. And he's got his actual outfit, and he looks badass. And it's Marvel's Batman, and I love it. Alright, we're getting down to the wire here, folks. We're almost done. We're almost out of the woods. Mother... This movie to me was perplexing. It was incredibly interesting. Uh, biblical allegory. I went into the movie not expecting that. And when it was all said and done, I was like, what was that movie? And then I was like, oh, biblical allegory. I get it. I like the movie. I know a lot of people hate it. It's a very divisive movie because it's like an artistic, art house, weirdness movie. But it's so visceral and disturbing. Like, really, it's uncomfortable and claustrophobic. You're so close to Jennifer Lawrence the whole movie. I like it a lot. And also, American Made. This movie, I don't know if anyone saw it. I actually don't know, because I have literally, I've heard nothing about it before or after seeing the movie. I've never heard anyone mention this movie. Like, it came out, it was a big release, but no one's talked about it. I thought this was a great movie. Tom Cruise in this true crime story. It's this pilot who's, like, smuggling drugs and shit. I thought it was a really fun movie, interesting, um, it wasn't perfect, it kind of, like my enthusiasm, it's like the plane started out strong and started running out of gas, there, I just made an analogy, ha ha ha, but um, I still really like the movie, it's a lot of fun. Kingsman, The Golden Circle, another movie, I like it, it's a lot of fun, it's a little bit dumber than the first in a bad way, they waste poor Channing Tatum, poor Channing Tatum doesn't do shit in the movie, neither does Halle Berry, Julianne Moore gives it curiously wasted performance where it's like she could have been doing so much more jeff bridges does nothing like the things i was excited about like the statesman all these american cowboys that was so totally wasted but it's still a really fun enjoyable movie that style of uh, matthew vaughn i love it and it's just it's a drop from the first movie for sure but it's still pretty fun and it made me hungry for a hamburger you know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. Next up, Dunkirk, Chris Nolan's war epic. This movie blew me away. One of my favorite movies of the year so far. Can't say enough good things about Dunkirk. The movie, just the style, the way they decide to tell that story, oh, it makes it, like, you could argue it's not necessary, but in a way I think it is because it gave it such an edge of, like, something very unconventional. Just the cinematography, that music, Hans Zimmer's music. Mmm, that's my jam. That is my intense, ever-building tension jam. Logan Lucky, I didn't get a chance to review this, but I really wanted to because I saw this movie a little bit after it had come out, and it blew me away. This is a Steven Soderbergh movie, and I'll tell you, this is the Ocean's Eleven sequel everyone wanted. Like, Ocean's 12 and 13, whatever. But, like, this movie is such a great heist movie, and it's just so charming. Channing Tatum, Daniel Craig... Adam Driver in this movie I love. You're going to you're going to rob the NASCAR there, brother. I'm a hick. I have a prosthetic arm. I'm going to rob the NASCAR with you. You like my accent? In a couple months I'm gonna be in Star Wars The Last Jedi. I don't know how good of an impression that is. I haven't worked on it, but I love Adam Driver in the movie. It's fun, it's got a lot of heart. I adored uh, Logan Lucky. War for the Planet of the Apes, I saw this a second time because I, I felt a little curious about this movie because I, I love it. I think it's great. It's the most dramatic, dark movie of the trilogy. Um, but the emotion I felt was lacking because I'm with Caesar. This is the conclusion of that whole trilogy of story for Caesar at least. And I'm into him like the action's cool. Uh, I'm into the story, but in a lot of ways it felt like a step down from Dawn. Like the action was way better in Dawn. For a movie called War for the Planet of the Apes, that's kind of an issue. The story they're telling, it's like a very simple revenge story, but like the emotionality, I wanted the movie to really hit me, and it didn't. And I was disappointed by that. That's why I felt like the other one was better. That one gets me every time. I'm with that movie. This one, 
It's like I'm at a bit of a distance. I don't sympathize and get emotionally punched like I want to. I like to be emotionally abused and like beaten up by a movie and it can do that to me. Uh, it, that's a little bit disappointing. Next up, a movie that can emotionally hit me. When Wonder Woman walks out into no man's land, goosebumps, chills, maybe a couple tears. Wonder Woman, this movie, love it. It's not perfect. That third act end battle sequence with Ares. It's just, it's the same old crap we get in every other movie, and it's a disappointing finish. A disappointing button on the movie is that her final battle is pretty weak. Like, <sighs> David Thewlis just looks silly when he's in that armor, and he's like, I will destroy you! It, no. But the rest of the movie's so good. Gal Gadot is wonderful. They finally did a female superhero-led film that's awesome, that's amazing. Women... Girls, they have a hero to look up to that got her own movie. It's not just Black Widow as a side character. It's actually like a hero front and center. It's awesome. It was a very important movie, and it was a great movie. Baby Driver, another great movie. Um, the movie is ever so slightly clouded by some certain someone's... Uh, yeah, we'll just pretend he's not there right now. But still, despite Kevin Spacey, who I love anyway, but yeah, if he... <laughs> that whole story, oh boy. But like, I like him in movies, and I'm still gonna watch this movie because this is an amazing movie, the best edited movie of the year, a great soundtrack, a wonderful action movie. I love it, Edgar Wright, that dude's style aids itself so well to this movie. I love it. Another movie I love and absolutely adore, my favorite movie of 2016, La La Land. This musical, Oh, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, I just love them together. The music, everything about the movie, I could gush about it for days. It's such, it's such a type of movie I would adore. It's the movie directly made for me. I love it. And the final one, I haven't done my best of the year list, but I guarantee you this one's on there. If you saw my review, not enough people are talking about this movie. Wind River, this freaking movie. Did I not give it an A plus in my review? I think I was like, for whatever reason, was like, it's an A, like I just couldn't, like that day I just didn't feel like going for an A+. I haven't rewatched it yet, but I feel like just in hindsight remembering like, it's been a couple months, I feel like that movie should be an A+. It is an incredible movie, Elizabeth Olsen's fantastic, Jeremy Renner, so good, everyone else in the movie's great, it's just such a great, dark, um, I wouldn't quite say detective story, but crime story, trying to solve a crime. It's so good. It's a beautiful looking movie, that frozen winter landscape. Do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen it, watch Wind River. This this might be the best movie of 2017. I'll stand by that. Okay, let's see if we can pick all these up. I'll give you a hint. I won't be able to, but I'm going to try and that's what's important. Eh, not, not good enough, right? Oh shit, we can almost do it. We can almost pick everything up, but any more and it's going to collapse. Oh, drown me in it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to go to class like right now. I got 15 minutes. It takes 10 minutes to walk there. Fuck. But yeah, that's the Blu-ray collection update video. What do you think of all those movies? Comment below. Tell me you thought of them. Ah, uh, consumerism. It smells it smells good, but in reality it's bad for you and it really it it makes you feel good inside cuz I'm empty inside and have nothing. <laughs> but um at, when you think about it in hindsight, it's soul crushing and it's draining and suddenly I have a urge to hit myself with something. I don't know where it's going with that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.